Hello, and welcome to Songs for the Struggling Artist, the blog cast. This is episode 151. And for today's episode, I'm going to do something that I don't usually do. Um, I blog cast pretty much every post over on the blog, except for uh, my, my series of rejections. And the reason I don't podcast those is that they're not they're not usually st- stellar writing or that exciting um i feel like if you're going to do me the honor of listening you, you i should give you the best and the rejections are really there because um they were suggested by one of my patrons on Patreon when i was trying to figure out how to like work up the will to continue to apply for things when I knew I was going to be rejected over and over and over and over and over again and that it was painful, et cetera. Anyway, so her, her idea was that if I wrote something um, every time I got a rejection, that way my patrons would pay me every time I got a rejection uh, because that's the way my Patreon works. It works on a pay-per-post situation. So every time I make a post on my blog, my patrons uh, pay for m- that po- post. And so she suggested I do that for rejections, which is how I get paid to get rejected for stuff. Which is why I don't post the rejections on the podcast for the most part. Until today. Today, um, I thought I would share this one with you because a lot of people... Uh, commented on it and seemed to be moved by it. So I thought you might want to hear it. Here it is. Medusa long shot rocket rejection. I started working on my Medusa play sometime around when I started my theater company, which was close to 18 years ago. I abandoned the play after doing a reading of it, but then picked it back up a few years ago when an actor who'd read one of the parts that first time asked after it. I don't know if it had been a full decade at that point, but the fact that it had stuck with him after so long made me feel like it was worth grappling with. After much wrestling, I got the play into shape and did a reading in Brooklyn, and after it, I felt like I still wasn't sure if it was worth anything. One of my listeners pointed out that I might not really know what was actually there until I had the exact right actors. He suggested I think big. I knew who I needed. As the person who gave the single best performance I have ever seen, I knew that hearing her read it would tell me everything I needed to know. I also knew that in order to have that happen, I needed to make the play good enough for her. I imagined her reading it as I was writing, and the play got better. I did another reading in Queens with a game group of lovely actors, and I got even closer to what I thought the play wanted to be. All along, I was thinking of this sort of lodestar of a performer and how to get it to her, how to connect with her, how to strategize for this play's future. As time went by, the play was selected as a semifinalist for the O'Neill National Playwrights Conference, but went no further. All of my attempts to make a connection with my Medusa Lodestar failed. Then, I saw that she'd be performing in a public park, so I printed out a copy and brought it with me in case I could be brave enough to give it to her. I was. I was brave enough, and it was mortifying. (laughs) Completely and totally mortifying. I don't recommend this sort of experience to anyone. But even though she wouldn't take the stack of paper in the moment, she told me to send it to her agent. And believe me, it had been suggested to me to send it to her agent before, but that information is not particularly easy for an outsider to find, so the principal value in standing before the actual person was that I could ask her who her agent was. (laughs) Then began the tricky task of finding her agent's information. You realize when diving into this sort of world that so much of it is designed to intimidate and keep you out. The world of agents is built to make it difficult to find them. There are services you can pay to simply get an email. But 
with the support of a clever friend, I finally got to the agent. Also, with a lot of coaching from my clever friend, I did some finely crafted emailing to just get this play to the woman who had been its muse. After about a week of back and forth, it was, in fact, sent to her. Just getting that far felt like a great leap. It wasn't just the labor of the week to get it to her, but the years of putting it on my list to figure out and all the attempts before. I launched the rocket into space. Within days, the rocket fell to Earth as I heard back that the play was not for her. Strangely, given how intimidating the world around agents is, the rejection was one of the best I've received. It was succinct, clear, and gentle. I wonder if agents learn that skill because they never really want to give anyone a hard no. Well, what if Julie Taymor suddenly decided to put my Medusa on at the National Theater with a million-dollar salary? Would my muse be interested then? She might. Or at least there might be another conversation to be had. So weirdly, I find myself wishing other rejectors could be more like an actor's agent. Reject us like you might have to make a million-dollar deal with us next time, because you just never know. Meanwhile... Here I am, watching my last real hope for this play float away. I know it makes no sense to set a bubble of hope on an actor's interest, but it was literally the only idea I had for the future of this play. I can't produce it myself. It's too big for the resources I can gather. It's not the kind of show you can do at your local community playhouse. So... This particular rejection hit me hard. Even though I knew it was a long shot, it was the longest shot. And it's going to take some time to gather the strength to build another rocket, or even just a wagon. It's going to take some time to reassemble some hope. Maybe it'll be another 10 years. Or maybe never at all. Wow. So reading that out loud, I realized that that ending got a little dark. <laughs> I'm going to edit. I'm going to edit that those last couple of lines uh, in the blog. So they're not quite so bleak. I think maybe I was feeling a little bit down when I wrote this particular <laughs> blog. And just uh, FYI, the previous episode... I'm going to say it's like two or three ago about Fortune Favors the Bold. That that was actually about the, the attempt to speak to the great actress, great actor. I'm not trying to be coy so much as I just don't want to have uh, my humiliation searchable <laughs> with her name. So... Um, you can ask me in person, though, if you or, you know, via, via private channels, I'll be happy to tell you. Um, yeah, so the song today is actually what I decided to do was put a song that is probably as old as my process of working on this play. Um, so I started, I, as I said in the blog, like 18 years ago, I think I started this Medusa play. And... In going through my back catalog of songs that I've never recorded, uh, I found one that is just about the same age. Maybe, I don't know. It could be older, could be younger. It's not. It's not clear to me. I, I don't. I didn't put dates on things back back in the day. So, but I I would chart it around about the same period. So, um, it's an old it's an oldie from from way back when that I that I. One of the ones that I actually didn't really need to relearn, like I remembered it. Um, I did have to practice it a little bit. <laughs> it's got some tricky finger work. Um, but yeah, so I'll put that there at the end. It, it is called My Cursed Tongue. And um, meanwhile, I will say if you want to support the podcast... Five stars on uh, Apple Podcasts. Nice review will also help. Um, join my mailing list at emilyrainbowdavis.com. 
If you feel like you can throw a few dollars to this indie podcaster, that's awesome. And I, there are a few ways to do that. First, patreon.com slash Emily R. Davis. Um, those are the people who pay for this podcast fundamentally um, and the blog and, and who encouraged me to do all of this rejection stuff. Um, yeah, so that's there. And then there's also PayPal, at Struggling Artist, and Kofi is under my name, Emily Rainbow Davis. So without further ado, uh, thanks for listening. That's the, that's the main thing. Thank you. And, uh, and here is my cursed tongue. I don't know why I can't learn my lesson. I don't know why I can't hold my peace. I don't know help guessing I keep messing up expressions of love will my cursed tongue never cease just want to lay myself out on the table give you a card and a pencil to label Expressions of love will my cursed tongue never see.